All right. Well, thank you everyone for, for joining the session um, on uh, extracting insights from big data using transactional machine learning. Um, super excited to, to be here at the Apechicon, um 2021 conference. Uh, it's virtual, but that's the, the new world we live in. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple of uh, slides to to um, get into more more details on how we extract data from Kafka using Python um, in in the big data streaming world. A little bit about me. Um, I'm Sebastian. I'm the principal architect at um, for AI, ML, and data science with uh, with Alo Networks, which is a fast growing company based out uh, out of uh, Milipitas, uh, California, Silicon Valley. Um, a bit of my industry experience uh, has been vast uh, and <laughs> wide and deep, I suppose. Uh, but uh, my main focus over the past 20 plus years has been around, uh, of course, AI, ML, data science, both at the academic and professional levels. Okay. The, the talk that I'm going to be focusing on today is based on my book called Transactional uh, Machine Learning which is published uh, on apres.com, uh, recently published, uh, March 2021. The book's available on, on uh, of course, Apress, Amazon, O'Reilly, uh, Springer, and, and Powell. So all of the stuff that you're hearing today is in the book. So if you're, uh, if you're uh, feeling adventurous, please, uh, please go and, and read the book. I hope you'll find it interesting. Okay, the agenda for, for today is going to be focusing on uh, of course, on um, big data, data streaming uh, with Kafka and Python. But before we get there, we'll talk a little bit about the business of, of, of data. Of course, we all know data. This is the Apache Con conference. We're all familiar with, with, with using data, um, but data is getting uh, bigger and faster, right? And so the, the area where this uh, uh, talk is focused on is how do we apply advanced machine learning on data streams using Kafka and, and Python. And here we'll, you know, we'll talk a little bit about as well, um, what is the, you know, how do we go about extracting value from, from data streams using machine learning algorithms? Um, this is where transactional machine learning uh, comes in. We'll talk about the PML uh, architecture. We'll talk about something about PML technologies, what we can use to, to take advantage of data streams with uh, deep learning. Uh, and we'll conclude, and there's uh, references at the end of this uh, presentation as well. So just very quickly, um, the, so the business of data, and again, you know, I don't need to go through this. I'll just go through this very quickly. We all know data is accumulating uh, you know, extremely fast on a daily basis. We all have iPhones. We all watch, you know, uh, streaming TV, streaming music. Uh, we have connected devices, you know, et cetera. All of these devices and and um, and technologies are streaming data today, being housed in a in a big infrastructure environment such as you know AWS, GCP, or or you know Azure. You know, big cloud infrastructure is is housing the data, and these cloud infrastructures are housing a lot of data on a, on a day to day basis. And data streams, however, are also growing in importance, and this is where I think in the IoT industry where you may have you know, a robotic uh, vacuum cleaner, you may have smart switches, smart TV, smart everything, smart ovens, you know, all of these things are also streaming data. And where, where transactional machine learning you know, offers some help is extracting you know, value from that data while the data is on the wire, right? Using algorithms. So this is, uh, this is an area which is, which is growing. It's an exciting area and the potential is, is, is massive. Um, and of course, I should mention, you know, we're now getting into the 5G telecom space. Networks are also getting faster. So the, so the pipes are getting bigger and bigger that can house or stream more data, which just opens up opportunities for machine learning guys like me and, you know, and, and transactional machine learning uh, will become more and more popular. Big data, as, as we all know, 
it, it, you know, has several characteristics, but some of the key ones are volume variety, veracity of the data, velocity of the data, and value of the data. Now, a couple of things with big data is much of it is, you know, as we know, um, static, right? So data gets housed, data gets stored, and, and, you know, we do analysis on that data, usually using batch-based machine learning. We're still not using transactional machine learning on big data streams. And, and this is the this is the area that that of course is the focus of this talk. But it's an interesting area, and the evolution of big data streams is really from big data, right? It's all big data, but it's really about the speed of the data across the wire that is interesting, right? And opens up opportunities for uh, transactional uh, machine learning. So a little bit about data streams. Agarwal in 2007 um, and and uh, other authors uh, came out with this book that was quite uh, informative in the area of data streams. They define a lot of the principles around data streams, some of the theoretical backgrounds uh, on data streams that, um, that I've uh, found you know, extremely valuable in my work. Sorry, I'm just gonna adjust the screen here. Oops, go back a little bit, sorry. Um, so a lot of the, some of the main characteristics of data streams, of course, the data is continuously moving, right? It's continuously updated, it's continuously captured. I mean, if you go to Amazon, you know, and, and buy a book, well, if you think about Amazon, uh, you know, using uh, sort of a publisher subscriber type of model like Kafka, um, you know, a, a book gets ordered, that automatically goes to the warehouse, that then ships the book, you know, and, and there's a lot of complicated use cases and processes that, you know, Kafka is, you know, it's perfect for. Um, but, you know, there's other processes that that sometimes, you know, every time you, you buy from a credit card or, you know, you, you put your name down or your product or purchases, et cetera, and that data is moving through the wire, well, you've, you're exposing yourself also to certain security, um, you know, concerns. So we all, you know, financial fraud is, is on the rise. Digital fraud is on the rise. Transactional machine learning is also a great application for detecting fraud in real time, right, instantly using deeper algorithms. So, you know, there's, there's technologies like Spark Streaming and, you know, different uh, other technologies, Apache Flink, um, that offer uh, streaming uh, ML or streaming analytics. The difference, and I talk a little bit about how, you know, Kafka, Python, and TML differ a little bit from Spark Streaming, right? And we're in really the, 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 the area of where it differs is using a deeper uh, machine learning based algorithmic approach in real time um, on data streams, right? So for example, if you wanted to figure out what is the best algorithm uh, as the data is moving through the wire, using TML technologies like auto machine learning is a great way to figure out, do you have the best algorithm that best fits that transactional data at that point in time, right? And Kafka allows us to, allows us to do that. So browsing the web also re results in, you know, enormous amounts of data. So, and, you know, the, the cars we drive and, you know, also I've, I've seen several e-bikes here in Toronto, uh, Canada, uh, you know, so th those are also, you know, becoming more and more popular. So everything is getting connected. And the cool thing is they're all producing data. Um, the other aspect of data streams is, however, several challenges with data, data streams. And of course, one of the key challenge is, you know, data stream, uh, one of the main characteristics of data streams is temporal locality. So as data is moving through the wire, the, the, the influence of time becomes very important, right? So if you're doing machine learning on data streams, you must incorporate time into your algorithm. And what that means is, well, one of the key characteristics of data streams compared to sort of static big data is the underlying patterns of the data, uh, the underlying patterns in the data in a data stream will likely change much more quickly, right? So you'll, you'll get uh, additional patterns that are coming into the data um, that you, you would want to learn. Now, if you're using batch-based machine learning and patterns are changing and, you, and you're doing you know, machine learning on that data, you know, every day or every five days, well, you may be missing those patterns in the data. With transactional machine learning, as patterns are changing in real-time data over time, um, you know, you can apply ML algorithms to ensure you've got the best algorithm that best fits that data at that point in time. So you can literally run TML on that tranche of data every 30 seconds every 15 seconds, et cetera. And you're ensuring that you're getting the best algorithm that's learning those underlying patterns of the data um, you know, as accurately as possible. 
Okay. So the, what is the main difference between conventional machine learning and, and transactional machine learning? So conventional machine learning is, is sort of what many of us do, right? If you've been in the data science business field for 20 plus years like I have, um, it's grown a lot. But if you think about the algorithms in data science, they haven't really changed much. I mean, many of the algorithms, neural nets, linear regression, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, gradient descent algorithms. I mean, they've been around for decades, right? We, we're just applying them in different different use cases and different environments and different contexts. But the math hasn't changed, right? The math has been around for for decades. Um, but you know, one of the areas, uh, and 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 so what this is really just showing you is sort of a Venn diagram. And I hope you can see this carefully, but I'm sure it's going to be on YouTube. But um, what what this is basically showing you is where machine learning uh, can, uh, in a conventional sense, um, uh, still exist today. So basically here, let me just uh, scroll here, up here. Scroll in, oh, sorry, zoom in. So if you look at this graph or this Venn diagram, you see that, you know, a lot of us use predictive analytics today. A lot of the, a lot of the companies use predictive analytics in real time. A lot of them, you know, a lot of uh, our business is scalable. So cloud is getting cheaper, right? Um, then, you know, we compute these algorithms to, we can run these machine learning algorithms to find the optimal algorithm for the data. However, conventional machine learning is still done offline, right? So you have data, you run your algorithms, and then you use that, you know, trained algorithm to, um, to do predictive analytics or, or, or optimization. Uh, that's the conventional sense of a machine learning. And so here you're just basically seeing that, showing that, you know, you know what, where companies are today, many companies are doing predictive analytics, obviously. Many companies are doing real-time analytics. Many companies are doing analytics at scale. Um, the area where it still is, is highest value is, is that number seven point, is the intersection between scale, prediction and optimization, real-time, and uh, and finding these optimal algorithms for for machine learning algorithms. That's where you know the the, the real value is. Um, and and this, the other part of of uh, conventional machine learning is we're still in the world of batch based machine learning, right? Data is disk resident. Um, the class of problems that are suited are you know in the structured unstructured problem uh, areas. Mach conventional machine learning algorithms are not very elastic. So if you wanted to add more features to the model, you want to add more data, you know you got to retrain the model to ensure that it's learned those patterns. So it makes it kind of you know not very elastic. It more it's got a lot of friction points. So there's a lot of humans that need to interact. With the with the machine learning model, with the retraining process, et cetera. So what we really want to do is we want to reduce those frictions. We want to you know create a, a machine learning platform that is elastic. It'll grow with your business quickly, right? That's kind of still difficult to do with with the conventional machine learning uh, that we do today, right? And so where transactional machine learning uh, really Try, oh, the problem that transactional machine learning really tries to address is with that whole friction process, right? Um, one of the components or main components of, of transactional machine learning is auto machine learning. So we've all, you know, we all know about what auto ML is, or many of us do anyway. Um, the friction points with auto ML are drastically reduced, right? It'll automatically find optimal algorithms that best fit the data and, and allow you to use that algorithm for uh, predictive uh, or optimization. So the way I define transactional machine learning is the ability of a computer to learn from data streams by using automated ML applied to the entire or partial data stream set that leads to a frictionless and elastic machine learning process and solution that is continuous and mostly uninterpreted by humans, right? And, and that this definition is, is in the book. And, and really what we wanna do is we wanna operate on data that is continuously flowing. You know, data is coming uh, at us from, from everywhere, from, from every source, and it's going to, you know, going everywhere as well. So those are the challenges I think that conventional machine learning still needs to figure out. Right. And and while transactional machine learning has several of advantages, you know, obviously there are some shortcomings in everything. But the areas where TML um, uh, addresses is in those areas where we want to deal with, you know, under understanding the underlying patterns and, and fast moving data.
right? And we and you know we don't we want we don't want to use offline analytics or offline algorithms. We want to use online machine learning models and apply those very quickly to data streams uh, and get get those insights uh, at a highest quality po uh, possible. So TML uses AutoML techniques like linear regression, neural nets, logistic regression, uh, and these are very mature and established algorithms in the field. So a couple of the key features or five features of, of transactional machine learning is data fluidity. So just like streams of water, data flows in from any direction, i.e. the source, data flows out to any uh, any location, i.e. the sink. And you know that may sound familiar to, to a lot of the Kafka people in the audience. You know, source and sink is a very important aspect in Kafka. Uh, data streams must be joinable, right? So, you know, it, it, when we talk about machine learning, we talk about variables, dependent and independent variables. What TML allows you to do is, you know, it allows you to join these streams that you may have a, a dependent variable stream, you may have independent variable streams. Well, you can join them, right? In real time, construct your training data set and start doing ML on it, right? That's a cool piece, right? Data stream format is standardized on JSON. Right, so standardization is very important uh, for for TML, and JSON is is the format that uh, that it uses. Data streams are integrated within AutoML techniques or AutoML uh, technology that allow you to to run advanced algorithms, deeper algorithms on uh, tranches of data as it's flowing on the wire. Right, and of course, low code uh, TML comes with a um, a Python library that you can write very quick Python code, and all of this code is 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 in the book and also on GitHub for free. Everything is free, um, and uh, I'll show you in the next slides where you can download and, and use it immediately. So, uh, so you can see the difference between the Venn diagrams and the conventional machine learning with this uh, this process where really what this TML is trying to do is move the offline ML to the online process, right? So here you can see that, you know, we still have the same predictions, real time scale. It's, it's the transactional machine learning that brings the online, the offline ML to the online FM, uh, online process where you can run ML right on, you know, on data on the wire, right? In, in real time. Not many companies are doing this today and, that, and that's where the value is, right? So very few companies are doing um, step, you know, four, five and six today. But, you know, as we're getting more data, as we're, you know, data is getting faster and faster, you'll see this, you'll see this, um, you know, companies asking for faster insights and TML is, is one way to deliver faster insights. So where does this leave us, right? So if you think about, you know, where, where we're coming from, right, you know, past 10 years ago, you know, we talked a lot about business intelligence, right? Uh, you know, uh, dashboards and stuff like that. So this is kind of showing you the evolution towards transactional machine learning. So in this table, you'll see, um, you know, some, some columns. So the top columns are data mining and business intelligence, batch-based machine learning and transactional. Those are the areas, right? That, that over time we have, we have uh, we're focused on. The uh, left-hand side is, you know, how are these, uh, areas impacting uh, certain attributes, right, of, of the data, of the algorithms, of the environment. And those are data refresh rates, decision speeds, data environment, use cases, machine learning solutions. So here, just basically to, to show you that, you know, five, you know, 10, seven, 10 years ago, data mining and business intelligence is still important today, right? But you can see that data refresh rates weren't required to be that quick, right? Data refresh rates perhaps in days. Uh, decision speed, you know, more humans were in the loop. Data environment, more SQL. Uh, data mining, middle layer, data visualization was, was the front end. Use cases for data mining, BI, um, you know, low volume decision support, customer profitability analysis, for example, business performance. Um, machine learning solutions were high friction solutions, a lot of humans. Right, we're building these these BI solutions, dashboarding, data mining, very low elasticity in those solutions. As we're moving over time, right, data is getting faster, right. So that's batch-based machine learning. So as data is coming in, you know, data is residing there for maybe an hour. We do ML on it, you know, and then we do you know use it for for predictive. But you can see that decision speeds are more hybrid now. We're integrating more machines into the decision uh, process. 
Uh, we, uh, data environments are changing, right? We're looking at, you know, Hadoop uh, are, is very popular today, uh, but there's other environments that, you know, uh, speak towards uh, or speak to more uh, data lake environments, uh, data lake storage, cluster computing is very important, machine learning infrastructure is changing, but you can see that the use cases as well, um, uh, medium volume decision making, ad placements on websites, you know, if you look at Google, Google Ads, you know, if you're, you know, you're checking your email and you're surprised, hey, I see this ad that was in my email or something like that, right? Those are all intelligent based computing to do more targeted advertising to, to us. Um, dynamic pricing, etc. But you can see that the machine learning solutions, the friction of those machine learning solutions, because we're involving more, you know, uh, more machines and humans, um, they're getting the friction is getting less and less. Uh, the elasticity of those solutions are easier are, are getting easier to scale, right? In in cloud-based environment, and then you move on to transactional machine learning, where we're, the data refresh rates we're talking about seconds and milliseconds now, right? We're you know auto machine learning is coming you know becoming more and more relevant as we're looking at faster and faster data, more and more data. Uh, data environments are changing to data streams, event stream infrastructures, um, AutoML services, you know, uh, microservice-based architecture. All of these things are are starting to you know become more prevalent, right? In in many of the uh, many of the companies out there, uh, high volume of data decision making. So we talked about you know credit card fraud. You know, there's also you know digital currency fraud. You know, digital Bitcoin is getting popular, and other currency, Ethereum, etc. Of course, the bad guys know that as well, so they're going to try, try to take advantage of that. Um, so, you know, uh, applying machine learning uh, in, in in the world of data streams is going to get more and more important. And of course, you know, all of our devices are getting connected uh, as, as well. So, what that really leaves us with is for us to pro, to for us to learn from fast data, but learn in a deeper level, uh, you know, we're going to have to use deeper algorithms, right? We're going to have to use machine learning algorithms to do that. And we're going to have to do it in an automated fashion. So what that leaves us with is lower friction points on ML solutions where we do not require that many humans because it's just impossible. Right to to run all these different algorithms on data, you know, every second, every 30 seconds, or or whatever, or what have you. Elasticity of those solutions. If you wanted to add more data, more variables to the solution, we wanna we wanna do that very quickly, right? So so think about TML uh, as as it evolved over time, you know, really allowing us to leverage machines more, allowing us to reduce, you know, friction points uh, in the machine learning process. And allows us to become, you know, really scale and build elastic ML solutions uh, very quickly uh, with uh, with the data. Okay. So Apache and Kafka, you know, Apache uh, or Apache Kafka is is a is a fascinating technology that um, you know that was developed out of LinkedIn now spun into a company called Confluent, uh, who's I believe presenting as well. But it's it's a it's an amazing technology for 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 many reasons. But some of the key areas where Kafka um, offers help for for transactional machine learning is is in the area of uh, offset. So machine learning is all about building models with historical data so we can teach algorithms, right? So, but to do that with data streams in a real-time environment, you need to ensure that you can roll back the data streams using offsets uh, very quickly. So offsets within Kafka are, are a very key concept to, to roll back the data set to get a historical stream so that we can then you know do ML on it. But of course, when you have the offset, you need to join those streams to build your model, right? And an ML model is based uh, for, on a, a dependent variable and independent variable. So by rolling back the streams, by joining the streams, we're able to actually build a, a training data set on the fly. Right, and that's it. Right, those are those are critical critical concepts, but they're very simple concepts. Right, for from a from a TML perspective that allows us to do uh, do ML. Um, and then once we have that training data set, and you can compute or or generate these train, training data sets, you know, as fast as you want. Right, dump it into another Kafka topic. You know, do an ML algorithm on it. Use that algorithm for predictive analytics or optimization, whatever. Right, uh, you have a lot of options to use. Uh, TML on with many different types of use cases, uh, and luckily for us, we have a platform like Kafka that enables us to, to do that. 
Kafka connectors as well. So you may be wondering, well, how do I subscribe to a topic? How do I create a topic? How do I dump data into a Kafka uh, uh, topic? Well, TML comes with its own connector. So you can download this connector on the GitHub website here. It's free. Um, and uh, there's, if you go to that website, you can, uh, there's a tons of information that allows you to build TML solutions really quickly. You'll need a Kafka account. Uh, of course, Kafka is offered by Confluent, but it's offered, also offered as a managed service with AWS, uh, GCP, and, um, and Azure. So this connector is needed for you to build TML solutions, and it's really simple to, to use. It's also on the Confluent uh, website as well. And with Python, so luckily for, for you, there is a Python library called Mads TML, allows you to build very quick solutions uh, with TML, integrated with Apache Kafka, so you can uh, write these solutions in a Python IDE or Jupyter Notebook, and all the details are on the GitHub website, and, about, and there's also free code that you can use and, and start uh, you know, streaming data and doing AutoML on data streams um, uh, within an hour. Right, uh, pretty simple. So everything is free, you can download it. Um, and so we go to Matt's TML, all the functions in the Matt's TML allow you to subscribe to a topic, uh, write data to a topic or, or to a Kafka group, right? If you wanna do parallel processing, uh, all of that is uh, possible through the, through the library. Uh, with TML technology, of course, so you're going to need TML. So all of these technologies for TML that are listed on the GitHub website are uh, will run in Linux, will run in Windows, or or Mac, right? So they're you, you can run them in any environment that that you please. Um, with uh, TML concepts, of course, you also have TML Auto ML technology that you can apply to data streams. It's, it is integrated with Kafka, um, so it'll hook into Kafka. It'll you know. Uh, run the algorithm, uh, give you the optimal algorithm. You can use that immediately to do uh, to do predictive analytics. There's also uh, visualization. So in the in the GitHub website, uh, uh, TML also provides you real time visualization using WebSockets, uh, which is also integrated with Kafka. So you know if you're doing predictive analytics and you want to do, for example, anomaly detection, right? So you can do anomaly detection in real time and see it stream on a web browser um, in real time as well, right? And so this TML technology for visualization called uh, uh, MADS visualization, Viper visualization, uh, has a built-in web server. So you don't need a web server. So you just run that on Linux or Mac or, or Windows and you start streaming visualizations uh, pretty quickly, okay? TML architecture very quickly, I know I'm almost at the end of the, the presentation. So, you know, we talk about source and sync within Kafka, what well, Kafka looks at, you know, producing it to a topic, consuming from a topic. The concept is very, very simple. You have, you know, your devices, your web data that you're streaming into Kafka that you that you can do with Mads TML library. So you can write to a Kafka topic, you can stream that data in there. Also, if you're concerned about security, uh, the, um, the connectors are also SSL TLS enabled. So if you have, uh, if you, uh, you would want to do that, right? If you uh, uh, have Kafka behind a firewall and you wanna write data to, to your topic, uh, it is all fully encrypted, right? And that's taken care, for, taken care of you, taken care of by the TML connector for, uh, uh, in, for Kafka there. Then you, once you have that uh, data being produced and you're doing all your uh, algorithms, you can also consume the data uh, for visualization, exactly the way I showed you uh, in the previous uh, slide. TML technologies, of course, all of this is free. You can go to, uh, you know, if you've got a Confluent account, you can set up a Kafka uh, account in Confluent or Google or, or Amazon MSK services. Those are all available through those vendors. Um, Apache Kafka connector, it's called Viper. It's on the GitHub website, it allows you to do anything you want with streaming data into a Kafka topic. Auto ML technologies will do linear regression, gradient boosting, genetics, uh, ridge regression, uh, linear gradient, peer group analysis, kind of interesting. It'll also do auto hyper tuning. So if you wanted to tune your uh, parameters, it'll, it'll HPDE will take care of it for you uh, automatically. And then of course the Viper Viz allows you to stream data uh, using either an HTTP connection or an HTTPS connection to any web browser, right? Over WebSockets. Okay. So just a very high level, I know almost at the end of the presentation here, but you know, just a, a representative um, architecture for fraud detection. So 
you know, think about on the left hand side, you've got, you know, bank accounts, uh, and those bank accounts have transactions. Each transaction has a field. Well, you can stream these fields into Kafka, right? So these fields would be would be topics that you would then stream into a Kafka uh, Kafka topic using Viper. And once uh, the fields are in the topic, you can actually extract the field. You can do auto ML or peer group analysis, which is again, all this code is on the GitHub website and there's a video as well. Um, and so when you do auto ML, that, that algorithm gets streamed back into Kafka. Then you can then visualize using uh, Viper visualization. So it's a very simple architecture, but extremely powerful if you wanted to do real time fraud detection on, uh, you know, on, on data. So in summary, um, CML, uh, TML is not a replacement for conventional machine learning. It's a complement. So both can exist together. Uh, CML, uh, conventional machine learning, operates on static disk resident data, whereas transactional machine learning operates on continuous flowing data streams. Right? TML is less uh, friction than, than conventional machine learning because we're using uh, auto, auto ML techniques. And also, it's also very elastic. If you want to add additional data streams to your ML model, uh, ML model, uh, you can do that, right? With Kafka, create another topic, uh, attach, uh, join the streams, and apply machine learning to the joined streams. Uh, TML is, of course, not for it's not the perfect solution for everything. But you know, if you're if you're looking at transactional data and you want to do, and, and you think that the underlying patterns in the data are changing very quickly, TML would make sense. Right in, in those respects. So banking fraud detection, IoT data, you know, all these things where data is very nonlinear and changing quickly, that's where TML, uh, TML would make sense. TML technologies, of course, you can go to, uh, go to GitHub uh, and download all those technologies uh, um, today. And you can start, uh, start building TML solutions. Here's a bit of uh, all the references for this. And of course, uh, if you want to, um, see all of this in action to understand a little bit more. Uh, there is a transactional machine learning book uh, with data streams and auto ML that you can buy from Amazon or wherever you like, if you, if you please. And that has all the details uh, and the code uh, that you can, that's basically available in GitHub for free as well. Okay, thank you very much.